All right, if you have your Bible, we'll open the book of John, chapter 3. I didn't even, uh, I didn't plan on preaching this message this morning until just a while ago. I prayed about some things, other things, and felt like the Lord had us use something different a while ago this morning. And then we got to talking in Sunday school there a minute ago about how that they pierced the hands of Jesus, how that they whipped his back, how that they pierced his side. I'll tell you something, folks. We should never, ever get over that. The Son of God loved us and gave himself for us. Get me down just a hire, Brian. We should never get over the fact what Jesus said when he said, My sheep know me. They hear my voice. I'm the good shepherd that gives his life for the sheep. And you personally will be a better Christian if every day in your secret prayer time or when you spend time alone in prayer, try to really take that thing personal. Try to, try to get to the place where you personally appreciate the Lord Jesus dying for you, going to the cross, paying for your sins, that you could be saved. So many times we try to pray other people's prayers. So many times we try to believe on other people's feet and go on other people's faith. And we say, well, they got the victory, so the Lord must be moving. But we ought to have a personal relationship with the Lord. All the way through the Bible, that's how it worked, in a personal way. I'd like to read the most well-loved, probably the greatest verse in the Bible, John 3, verse 16. Probably the greatest verse in the Word of God, if you want to look at it that way. John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I want to preach to you just a few minutes this morning on the greatest gift ever given. Let's bow our heads while we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for our health. Thank you for our strength. Thank you for all the many, many, many blessings of life. We thank you, Lord, for a privilege of coming to the house of God. Thank you, Lord, for the good Sunday school. Thank you, Lord, for the people that came. Thank you, Lord, for those that are here. Thank you for these that have been able to come on in to the preaching service. We thank you, Father, Lord, that we've got something to sing about. Thank you, Lord, we've got something to preach about. Thank you, Lord, that we've got a Bible that we can preach and believe and, and love and live. We thank you, Father, that one day you loved us while we were yet in our sin. Seek your Son to die on the cross for an old sinner like me that I could be saved, have my sins forgiven, have eternal life. I thank you for that, Lord, this morning. And I pray as we look into your Word that you illuminate our mind, loose our tongue, that we may declare the Word of God without fear, without favor, without partiality, without compromise, without anything, Lord, mixture of men, that we may brag on the Lord Jesus this morning and help us to love Him, serve Him more as we go our separate ways today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to bring you just a few thoughts this morning on the greatest gift that was ever given. And I know that you know what that gift was. When God loved this old ungodly world enough to give His Son to die on the cross for our sins that we could be saved. I hear a lot of people giving gifts. I remember somebody said to Elvis Presley, he liked you, that he'd buy you a brand new Cadillac. Maybe he never met you before except for one time. But if he just liked your looks or he was in a good mood, he'd bestow upon you a brand new Cadillac and sometimes buy eight or ten of them in the same day. And people thought, my, what would it be like to be around somebody like that? Just somebody to give you something for nothing. Just walk out and give you something. Somebody said there's some old nut millionaire went out on the street in New York and was dropping off $20 bills off the buildings, you know. They was floating down and people just getting all excited and it's in the newspaper. And oh, they said, how could a man give something that away? But wouldn't it be wonderful this morning if we could get that excited about the greatest gift ever given? More than just a Cadillac or more than just $20 bills? A Cadillac is going to last a few years and it'll be gone. $20 bill, you can spend that in five seconds and it'll be gone. But the gift that I'm talking about today is a gift that lasts from time and eternity. The greatest gift ever given was when God Almighty let His Son come down here to this earth of sin and shame and put on the likeness of sinful flesh when me and you was out there living in our sin and cussing, 
taking God's name in vain and, and some of you living in adultery and shacking up and uh, drugs and alcohol and God letting his son die to save an old bunch like us. That was the greatest gift ever given in this world. You think about it this morning, friend. If God hadn't gave his son, you would have still been in your sin and going to a hell fire to burn forever. We'd have been going to burn forever. But hallelujah! Thank God his name this morning and praise the name of the Lord. I'm not going to hell because God loved me. I'm not going to heaven because I'm a Baptist, because I'm a preacher. I'm going to heaven because God loved me. Old Danny Castle, when not many people did. My mom did, my daddy did, my family did, but outside of that, I can't think of five people that really loved me before I got saved. But thank God he did. I want you to notice this morning, you know that little poem, Mary had a little lamb? She sure did, brother. His name was Jesus. He was born in Bethlehem. He was the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. He had no earthly father. Jesus was born of a virgin. He had no, uh, without the earth, uh, human instrument of a human father. Some no modern day theologian said he didn't believe that. He said, I don't see that's impossibility. It's a biological impossibility that Jesus Christ could be born without the aid of a human father. And he said, you believe the Bible? And he said, yeah, you know, talk about Adam and Eve. And he said, man, that ain't nothing. The virgin birth is not near as big a miracle as the first Adam. The first Adam got here without a mother or a father. It ain't no problem for Jesus to get here without just a human father. God made Adam and Eve without a father or a mother. And brother, he gave his son, born of a virgin, to come into this world. I want you to notice a couple of things about this right briefly this morning. Number one, the giver of this gift. Who is the giver in this picture this morning? The Bible said, For God so loved the world that he, God, gave. God so loved. Our preacher used to tell us at Nebo, he said, You'll never be able to comprehend how much love is in that little word, so. How much did he love, preacher? The Bible said that he so loved. How much is that? I don't know, but it's a lot of love in that little word, so. God so loved. How much did he love, Brother Danny? He so loved the world. I don't know how much love that is, but it's a lot of love that he gave. The giver of this gift is God himself, the Father, the Creator. Have you ever wondered what God done before he ever made the world? I have. You know, God's always been here. And the world, the human population, ain't but about 6,000 years old. The world itself could be older, but the population is only about 6,000 years. I wonder what God done all them millions and billions of eons and trillions and billions of years before he ever decided to make the earth. I don't know. Maybe the Lord had something else to do. Maybe he's doing, maybe working on something else. Maybe he just was God in space. I don't understand. But isn't it amazing that the creator of all things the, the mind that knows everything, the mind who made this vast universe, he's the one that gave us the gift. God Almighty himself, creator, the father and the uh, creator of this universe. Now, God is the father of all men only in the sense that he's their creator. There's no such thing in the Bible as the brotherhood of man and the fatherhood of God in the sense that everybody being God's child. But the Bible said back in the Old Testament, I believe in the Malachi, I have we not all one father. Well, he's talking about there, God created all men, but God is not all men's father in the sense of a relationship and them his son. So the giver of this gift is God. The package of this gift, what it gave us, was eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. That means we're going to live forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. I do it when I'm witnessing to somebody. I set them down. And I say, did you know Bill or Tom or whatever his name is? I say, listen here, Tom. God's got a gift he wants to give you. You picture a great big old gift coming down out of the sky. And it's wrapped up with a pretty package and paper and a... And a a bow around it, and it's got, I know, on the name tag on the front of it, it's got whosoever will. One of the preachers during the Bible conference made reference to that. That was really a blessing to my heart. You know, a lot of times we, we say, put my name in there. Say like if I said, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that if Danny Castle will believe on him, Danny Castle will have everlasting life. But you know, that's not as sure as the way it is. Because there might be two or three Danny Castles in the world. I know all y'all hope and pray they ain't, but they might be. I know there's at least one more. I got a cousin named Danny Castle, and he's somewhere up in the mountains of West Virginia, and there ain't no telling. All the bad things that they told me, I'm going to blame them on him. Then probably I'll get a lot that he done. But I've got a cousin somewhere that I've never met named Danny Castle. 
And if the Bible said, if God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that if Danny Castle would believe on Him, He'd be saved, the devil would come to me and he'd say, well, that don't mean you. That means that other. But the way God's got it fixed up, the way God's got it fixed up, whosoever will. It don't matter if there's a hundred Danny Castles. Every one of us can get in. Every one of us can come to an old altar. Find peace to our soul. Get our sins forgiven. Have our name in the book of life. God so loved the world, He give us eternal life. If you're here this morning and you've not got eternal life, you can have it. It is a gift. You don't earn it. You don't work for it. You don't get baptized for it. You don't join a church for it. God gives a man eternal life, and you get it by believing and accepting it. Amen. Not only that, but the person of this gift. The person of this gift is, of course, the Lord Jesus Himself. For God so loved the world that He gave what? Who? His only begotten Son. What if your son had to die for one of your worst hated, dreaded enemies? Not many people would be willing to let their son, their only son, their only child die in the stead of their enemies. Not many people would be willing to do that, but God did. God so loved the world that He gave His Son, His Son, His Son. Not only that, but His only Son. Not only that, but His only begotten Son. What does that mean, preacher? That means that Jesus was the only Son that God begot with God's blood, with God's power, with God's nature in Him. Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God, the person of this gift. What if I worked hard? Well, let's just say me and my wife there, say we was dating before we got married. And I worked, and I worked, and I worked my fingers to the bone. And I worked overtime. And I was going to try to buy her a a diamond ring. And I couldn't wait. And every time when I'd get around her, I'd want to tell her that she's going to get it. But I'd I'd hold it, you know, so she wouldn't know it and it'd be a surprise. And I'd go every time I'd get my paycheck, I'd take 80% of what I make and pay it on that ring. And, you know, I'd just keep out enough for gas, just enough to get me something to eat. Every dime I got, every bit of it, wouldn't spare. Give it all on that ring. Boy, the day come me to finally get that thing out. I'd done without clothes. Maybe I'd done without food. Maybe I'd done without some necessity to buy this thing for her. The day come I'd go up there at the drug uh, jewelry store, and I'd want that thing out. And I'd say, oh, I'd come out to my ring, buddy. I'd say, they're the last payment on that thing. And he'd give me that thing in a little old box. I'd get that thing wrapped up and make a beautiful gift out of it. I've thought about this a lot of times. And boy, my heart would be a doing 90 mile an hour. And I'd say, well, it's got to be just right. What night shall I choose? Will it be Thursday night? Will it be Friday night? Will it be, you know, the timing's got to be right. Everything's got to be right. Where are you going to do it? Are you going to do it in the car? Are you going to do it in the porch? Are you going to do it at the restaurant? Are you going to do it, uh, uh, you know, in, out in the pasture? Are you going to do it... Uh, wherever you might be. And everything got to be right. You're going to give somebody a gift that means more to you than anything you've ever done in your life. Brother, I begin to talk to her and I say, now listen, honey, I've got something here for you. I, I, don't, I, I hope you'll love it. I hope you'll accept it. And brother, I've put my life's blood and sweat into that thing. About that time I show it to her. I say, well, here, what do you think? She looks at it and says, oh, that's nice. I expect her to start crying. I expect her to bring tears to her eyes. I expect her to, to uh, really break down and say, Oh, Danny, you shouldn't have and All that kind of thing. But instead, she says, I appreciate it, but I just don't think I can accept it. And I say, What? What? You can't accept it? How come? How come? And I want to know. And about that time, she pulls her in. She's got a little old cheek, one of them little old shiny dime store rings with real green and brother you can tell that thing didn't cost 15 cents and she said old Tom over here he let me have this one just yesterday and I know happened to know old Tom and he's a bum he runs around with every girl in the country he's a liar he just used them he ain't fit to kill and here I have given her my very best and she turns it down for that bum and that old sorry cheap plastic fake fool's gold that he give her Brother, that would break my heart, wouldn't it? But yet, how do you think God Almighty feels when He's done His best to give us His best? God didn't hold back. God didn't give us an angel. God didn't give us one of the saints that have died 
God gave the very best heaven had to offer. God gave the very best thing, the very most precious jewel in the kingdom of God up there in heaven all over the city of God was the Lord Jesus Christ and He gave it to us and God help us. We look at Him and say, Lord, I really appreciate that. And it don't do a thing for us. We ought to get down on our knees once in a while and thank God that He gave His Son to die for us on the cross to forgive our old ungodly low down rotten sin. A lot of time we got a little old cheap ring the devil gives us. And we say, well, God, I like to drink beer. And the devil give me a little old cheap ring. And I'm just going to serve him. And we break the heart of God. He knows what a low-down scoundrel the devil is. He knows the devil don't give you nothing but fool gold. He knows the devil give you marijuana and he'll give you sin. And he'll give you a big time. But the devil don't care nothing about you. God's the one that give you his very best. Everybody in here, you ought not to have to fuss at people to get them to come to church. They'd realize how much God loved them. I don't know if I have to fuss at y'all to get you to read the Bible. I don't know if I have to preach to you to get you to pray. If you realize that God loved you to give His very best, it'd do a lot for you. That's what the Scriptures say. He gave His head. John 19, 2. You know what they done to His head? They put a crown of thorns on His head. Not only did God give His head, but the Lord gave His cheeks. In Lamentations 3, 30, the Bible said, my, I give my cheeks to them that smite. They slapped him across the cheeks. Not only that, but God gave his eyes to weep. In Luke 19, 41, Jesus looked up his eyes over the city of Jerusalem and began to weep. God gave his son's eyes to weep over the sins of this world. Not only that, but God gave his tongue to pray. Luke 23, he prayed, Never, Father, not thy will, but thine be done. And Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. God gave his tongue to pray. He gave his back to be beaten in Psalm 129. Somebody mentioned it in Sunday school about his back. In Psalm 129, verse 3, they, they made plow furrows up his back. It was like a man takes a plow. And when, he, when the mule pulls it, that plow just cuts down into the ground and begins to cut, open up that ground for the garden. They plowed up the Lord Jesus Christ back. They went down into his flesh, and when that cat of nine tails jerked that thing back in that plow, dug down into his flesh and up his back, and brother, I don't hate to be a preacher like this, but a lot of time we're too sorry to even read the Bible. We're too sorry to visit. We're too sorry to pray. After he let him rip his guts out of his back and lied to us that much, we ought to love him back. Not only that, but he gave his side to be pierced. John 19, 34, so they stuck a spear in his side and they pierced his side and blood came out of it. He gave his hands and feet. Psalm 22, 16 said they pierced my hands and my feet. He gave his blood. 1 Peter 1, 18 said you're not redeemed with corruptible things of silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. And he gave his life. For all, Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God loved the world. He gave His head. He gave His cheeks. He gave His eyes. He gave His tongue. He gave His back. He gave His side. He gave His hands. He gave His feet and spilled out His blood for you and me to be saved. Thank God for such a wonderful gift. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Amen. Father, we pray this morning in Jesus' name. God, that you would help us to love you. God, I pray you'll forgive us for being sorry and no good and low down. Lord, forgive us for pouting. Forgive us, Lord, for being discouraged. God, forgive us, Lord, when we don't do as we ought to do. God, I pray that we'd love you and honor you and serve you. What a privilege is ours to lift up the blood-stained banner to the lost and dying world. Tell them that Jesus saves Oh, God, help us to be faithful to you till you come. Lord, God, help us this morning, even as we walk out of these doors, to spend time in, with you this afternoon. Help every person here to settle it in their hearts right now, to go home and pray and read the Word of God and seek your face and God move in their individual lives. Lord, God, I pray that you'd help us. Help us to love you. Help us to serve you. Help us, Lord, to do what you want us to. We'll praise you and thank you for it. While your heads are still bowed and eyes are still closed, we're not going to sing this morning and have any music. I wonder right quick before we go, would there be somebody here that say, Brother Danny, I'm not saved. My life's in a mess. And I know that Jesus loved me enough to die for me. And I ought to love Him. Would you pray for me? Would you slip up your hand and take it right back down? We're going to pray for you this morning. I don't know. There may be one here. I don't know. But if they are, we'd like to pray for you this morning. All right. 
Our Father, we pray that, Lord, that we that are saved would, would take this message to heart. Lord, that we would love you, honor you, and serve you.